Welcome to the RSP Boiler Room. I'm Matt Waldman with the Rookie Scouting Portfolio. Today's episode is wide receiver Colby Lissenby, the TCU wonder who blazed a 4.3540, putting smoke trails out there on the track at Indy. Now, as a deep threat at wide receiver, a 4.3540 pretty much means that you can outrun most cornerbacks in a straight line if you're going to get matched up one-on-one -on -one with these players. I'm going to show you two plays that give you an understanding of why straight line speed isn't everything. You also need to be physical at the catch point and you also have to understand how to get off the line of scrimmage so that you can use that speed to your best ability. So the first play is this old Miss Peach Bowl game where Listen B is dealing with a safety over the top and this is going to happen a lot in the NFL where you know teams are going to be able to put a safety over top here and force listen B to be a little bit more physical be more of a rebounder at the catch point and at six feet 197 it's not like listen B is a Vincent Jackson type of player but even when you're a smaller player you have to be able to show what he does here looked like it was going to be an interception didn't it because look at this position you've got the defender coming over from the inside getting the jump getting his hands out further getting to be first at the catch point but then look at listen B right here listen B has to reach across his body into the frame of the defender and pull the ball away that's good hand strength in addition to hand-eye coordination and this is an impressive play from a smaller wide receiver and it's something that's going to you know really do you know probably serve him well at the NFL level on occasion if he's consistent enough in the other aspects of his game but we'll look at it one more time I mean that's that's a physical play in tight coverage between two defenders to out jump really not even out jump but actually just reach in and pull the way the ball from a defender who out jumped him and do it without being distracted by the trail coverage it's nice work good use of his hands and it's something that is worthwhile to mention because when you watch listen be a little bit more he often doesn't use the best hand position on passes where he doesn't have to exhibit perfect hand position all the time he can be a bit of a passive catcher of the football when it's into his frame rather than extending fully like we're seeing here so this is really well done and it just shows you that if he pays attention to more detail about his catch technique that he's only going to get better as a pass catcher in all phases all types of routes now this is a play against Minnesota last year where we're going to look at a release and first we're going to look at this play in full speed and what we're going to see is him get outside and work against this corner in tight coverage but not come down with the football and the replay is going to show really the latter part of the stem to the catch point and you're going to see here that he's a little tied up Defenders leaning in to listen B's arm, kind of arm barring him a little bit with the elbow and the forearms is a really nice technique because he's not holding the wide receiver, but he's preventing the re receiver from being able to lift that arm up. This is a very, really savvy little play there, and it forces listen B to make a one-handed attempt on this. But none of this should have happened, and the responsibility is on listen B. It's not on the quarterback. And it's not always, it's not specifically a great play from the defender, even though he did good work here. So let's look at what happened. We're going to watch it one time and, and a couple more times in real, in real time here. And what you're looking for here is this first five to seven yards between the line of scrimmage and the first down marker. The first five to seven yards are the most important part of separating. Doesn't matter what four or five speed tells you because really if he separates early within this first next seven to ten yards, if he can get his back to the defender and in there and stack him, 
really doesn't matter how fast Colby Lissenby is or how slow he is, he's going to be the one in control of the pace unless the defender wants to run through Lissenby's back and draw a penalty on every route. So looking at this play one more time, you're going to see a release technique with his feet and a chop with his arm, and it doesn't work. We're at seven yards, and the defender's still a half step ahead of Lissenby. So let's break this down at a slower speed and look at really what the issue is. One of the first things that you're going to see is it's a two-step technique. A hop and then a release to the outside. Watch it one more time. Hop, release, and then the arm comes out to chop. But look at the defender. Even at this chop, the defender's a good yard ahead to the outside than where Listenby was. And I think the reason why is that Listenby should have used a three-step technique, not, not what he did here, which I think is kind of a cheating of a two-step technique. Maybe this is allowed by his coaches. Maybe it's even coached this way. But the defender's playing a little bit of an, in, uh, a little bit of an outside shade here, and he's over two yards away from Listen B in the first place. So Listen B needs to see this distance and understand that a two step release isn't going to get the defender close enough for him to be able to chop his arm and get outside with some separation. Because when that hop comes, the defender all he did was lean a little bit. Now it's a fairly patient defender here, but even if he wasn't, Listen B's actions here with this jump and then move outside are too quick for any defender two yards away to really get closer for this release to work. Listen B's got to take it to him and attack and in order to do that there needs to be a third step here a hop you know instead of a hop I would even say two steps because the two steps would take a little bit more time two steps here and he would then be able to hop outside. If he took one extra step into the defender, then that chop move is really going to make a difference because the defender probably would have had to turn inside on that second step. And with the defender's hips turned to the inside rather than to the outside during the chop, then you have an effective chop move. So a lot of this has to do with the footwork in addition to the arm work. The footwork would have sucked this defender into turning his hips inside. And then the chop would have been able to happen with the defender's hips turned inside. And instead of being behind the defender, he would have been even with the defender, probably within either at this point right here or within the next two steps. With the next two steps here or even three steps, he's still a half a yard behind. And now the defender can just pin listen be to the sideline, lean on him, do the arm bar with the elbow, and 4.35 speed pretty much squelched here. It doesn't matter because the throw was where it needed to be. If listen be where this throw arrives, if listen be were in front of the defender, the defender would have been a half step behind all because of the release in those first few steps and this is a much easier catch. So this is why speed only goes so far. Technique, especially at the very early stages of the route, is what's going to matter. That's why Cordero Patterson isn't a, isn't a big time wide receiver in the NFL right now. That's why Devontae Parker was a good slot receiver last year and, was, and did extremely well when he got to play from the slot. But his test is going to come this year to show whether or not he's learned some release moves. Because if he hasn't, he's going to look like Colby Listenby here a lot on Sundays. If he has learned, then you're going to see a dynamic football player. Just some food for thought on speed and technique at the wide receiver position. I'm Matt Waldman with the Rookie Scouting Portfolio. You can find more of my work at www.mattwaldmanrsp.com and at the YouTube channel RSP Film Room.